Hello, Big Show nerds. Thank you once again for joining me on your nerd news headlines. Seems to be the one thing that we have consistently all the time round about these parts on Big Show. Uh, but there is more videos coming, I promise. This is your nerd news headlines episode for April 17th, 2020. Uh, today's episode, we've actually got quite a bit to talk about. Uh, we have an up update on all of the streaming things, except for, I think, the only one I don't have an update for is Amazon and Netflix, which is interesting, but we do have some stuff from Peacock and so on and so forth, so uh, we also have updates from John Krasinski and maybe his Marvel debut, maybe, maybe, maybe. First, we have to hit an intro, then we'll talk about all of that, plus the rumor mill. Now, let's get into TV streaming. Uh, TV streaming, our first piece is an uh, update on the Disney Plus series, What If. If you are unfamiliar with this series, then you probably haven't been paying too close of attention, but the What If series is a Marvel series. It's going to be animated, and it is going to be based off of the Marvel comic book series of the same name, where they take What If scenarios in the universe and kind of play them out for a book or so. Uh, so, like, what if... Uh, what if Cap hadn't gone back in time? What if, uh, I don't even know, what if Wolverine were in the MCU? All of these things could could potentially happen in the what if scenarios. Uh, and then they, you know, in the series, in the Disney Plus series, it's going to be an episode. What if this? What if that? Uh, and, and then, like I said, in the comic book, it's, I believe all of them are single shot books, but they're always longer books. So it's kind of like getting two books in one. Uh, but the update on this, the news around this right now is that the animation director, Stephen Frank, uh, has confirmed that they definitely are still on task and they're all working from home because it's animated. So it should be super simple to do under under quarantine. As long as all of your animators have a properly powered computer, then you're good. And all of your voice actors have enough money or your production staff uh, can can afford to purchase for your voice actors who potentially don't have the money. But come on, uh, vocal recording equipment is pretty cheap. Uh, but yeah, so you can do all of these things for an animated series from the comforts of your very own home. So that's what they're doing. Uh, a real quick update there. Next, we're moving over to HBO Max. And we're talking about the new announcement that they just made dealing with uh, the first official projects from J.J. Abrams. Since they signed that 500 billion or whatever, 500 million, I think is actually what it was, uh, the contract with J.J. getting all of his exclusive uh, offerings, uh, the first three projects from that contract have been announced. The first of which is, uh, is called Overlook, which is obviously a series based on The Shining by Stephen King. The next one is a, uh, a series called Duster, which is an original series from J.J. Abrams. It's a detective story, apparently. And then the final one, and the one that has m the most interests peaked, if you will, is Justice League Dark. Uh, there are a number of rumors surrounding it. We will get to those in the rumor mill. But uh, that is super exciting that of the first bits of things that we are getting announced from this J.J. J. J. Abrams project, Justice League Dark is one of them. Uh, don't know exactly to what extent he's going to be show running or producing or what have you on any one of these three. Presumably, the Duster one will take up a lot of his time because it is an original series, uh, whereas I would imagine he would farm out a lot of the jobs on the other two projects, Justice League Dark being one of them. So... That's all we have there. Next, we have an, another update on another Disney Plus series, and it's Cassian Andor. The Cassian Andor series has just cast Stellan Skarsgård uh, and Kyle Soler 
in undisclosed roles. Really nothing else there, not even much rumor or speculation as to who either of them could be playing because Honestly, most of these characters are probably going to be brand new to the Star Wars universe. So uh, it'll be it'll be great to see Stellan Skarsgård in a Star Wars series, though. I, I'm really interested to see what he does in science fiction. Uh, that's what we've got there. And then we have our final piece of TV streaming is A Brave New World. So Peacock, the Universal streaming app, NBC Universal, uh, is adapting the Aldous Huxley book, and they just released a trailer. You can check the show notes for the link to that trailer, and then we can discuss it because I honestly didn't have time to watch it before I went to record. So I will try and we, we can have that conversation. I'll try and get something written up about it over on generallynerdy.net, which is my website, uh, so that we can have that conversation after I have already published this episode. So within the next day or so, I will get that watched and we will talk. Uh, but that is everything for TV streaming. Now we are moving over into movies news and movies. We have an update from John Krasinski. Uh, that's right. Everyone's wannabe or everyone's ideal actor, I guess. Wannabe makes it sound bad. But everyone's ideal actor for Mr. Fantastic has announced that he has, in fact, then this is like a proper announcement, like make, make, make it known kind of thing, that uh, he has been in conversation with, with Marvel. Exactly what happened in that conversation, what was discussed is anyone's guess and actually there are a number of rumors surrounding that conversation he had with disney marvel so again stick around to the rumor mill because we will be talking about that for sure uh that is the quick one there next we're talking about the uh, new green hornet movie going to be called green hornet and kato universal and m Amasia, sorry, I almost said Amnesia. Universal and Amasia Entertainment are teaming up to do another Green Hornet movie. Hopefully this one turns out... I mean, that, the, the Seth Rogen one wasn't horrible. It just wasn't that good either. So hopefully we get something a little bit better. Hopefully we see a little more Kato. I feel like that was one of the things that was really underwhelming about that Seth Rogen movie, but there was a lot underwhelming about that Seth Rogen movie, so that doesn't necessarily say much. Uh, but that that's all we've got there, and then our final piece in movies has to do with the next Mallrats movie. So Kevin Smith has confirmed that he has offered, and Bruce Campbell has accepted the role, uh, or a role, I guess, as himself in the next Mallrats movie. Uh, also, the next Mallrats movie is going to be called Twilight of the Mallrats. Um, I mean, like, I can see what he's trying to do with that title because Twilight, it's the end of the day, right? So it's the end of the Mallrats because malls in this country are dying. So, like, I understand it. It, I, it just seems a little clunky uh but yeah so the role that he's giving to bruce campbell and if you don't know who bruce campbell is man you need to go watch evil dead <laughs> or uh, bubba hotep i mean bruce campbell is a gem um he's an american icon dang it the the incorruptible the one and only bruce campbell uh that's apparently how he introduces himself i'm totally rambling right now but the the role that kevin smith has given to bruce campbell in twilight of the mall rats still think that title needs work uh is one that he had originally written for Stan Lee. So that's pretty big shoes to fill, man. Like, uh, if you saw the original Mallrats, then Stan Lee had a pretty long cameo in that movie where he's giving, uh, a, he's giving advice about writing comic books and stuff. And so I don't, it, it, some of the, one of the sources specifically made it sound like, and I, I need to listen to the episode of Fat Man Beyond, but it made it, the, the source that I got this from that wasn't Fat Man Beyond, made it sound like it was, it was going to be the same kind of situation where Bruce Campbell was going to be giving advice, life advice, but he's not really a comic book guy, so I don't know how that's going to work out. It'll be interesting to see Bruce Campbell, like I said, is a national treasure. So uh, that is what we have in movies. 
Let's talk rumors, ladies and gentlemen, uh, nerds and nerdettes and all of the things in between. We are talking first, John Krasinski. I'm not going to leave this one to the end. I feel like this one's much too exciting to not talk about immediately. So John Krasinski, like we covered in the news, he has met with Marvel, Disney Marvel specifically. And he what exactly transpired in that conversation he had with them is anybody's guess. So the rumors about what transpired in that conversation with them is are very interesting. First, uh, we have obviously the, the the obvious thing to talk about is he's going to be playing uh, Cap- uh, Mr. Fantastic, Captain Fantastic. What the heck am I saying? Mr. Fantastic in the Fantastic Four movie that we all know is heading towards us by Phase Five. We will see a Fantastic Four movie. Uh, we also know that his wife Emily Blunt has also been in talks with uh, Disney Marvel. So only makes sense because that is the ultimate fan casting is. Krasinski as Mr. Fantastic and Emily Blunt as the Invisible Woman. So, yes, please, if that is what, if that is the entirety of the conversation, then that's totally fine. However, there are other rumors that are going around saying that the conversation also or instead (laughs) consisted of directing options for Krasinski in the MCU because Feige has made it known that they are interested in Krasinski beyond his acting abilities and with him coming out as such a fantastic director, go see A Quiet Place if you question that. Uh, that it, it only makes sense that they're also looking at possibilities for him to direct and the rumored things for him to be directing are, of course, Fantastic Four, but also Sons of Midnight uh, and the new Captain America movie, which is very much down the road. So one or all of these things could be in the cards. However, our next piece of rumor might fly a little bit in the face of that last piece of rumor with Krasinski. The next piece has to do with Joss Whedon, and it is now also being rumored that Joss will be finding his way back into the MCU. Uh, Joss and Feige are very close, according to, you know, news reports, and, and, you know, they're always hanging out and such. Uh, and, And Feige has pretty much said that he really appreciates Joss uh, Joss's work and 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 they again they hang out and such. So Joss Whedon his issue is not with Feige apparently his issue is with Disney directly. I don't know how the powers that be are going to reconcile that, but apparently, again, if you want to believe this rumor, Joss will be returning. Uh, But there are two movies that are being rumored uh, that he's going to be sitting in the director's chair for, first of which being Fantastic Four. So if... John Krasinski doesn't take it, then maybe Joss will, or maybe they're offering it to Joss first, and if Joss doesn't take it, then John will. Who freaking knows? But the other one that is rumored to be uh, in the works for Joss Whedon to remake his return to the MCU is the next X-Men movie, or the first X-Men movie, I guess we should say. Uh, The X-Men one makes a little bit more sense because Joss does have a lot more history with that franchise. He wrote for that comic book for a significant amount of time. I can't remember if he ever wrote Fantastic Four. I just know he has a pretty memorable run on the X-Men. So that is kind of perfect, right? If he, he... created stories in the comic book itself and now he has the option to completely create from the ground up the mcu version of that franchise that that should be the way that that rumor goes but again it is rumored both ways that's all we have about Joss. Next, we're talking about that Justice League Dark rumor that we uh, that I briefly mentioned in the TV section, TV streaming section. Uh, Justice League Dark, there is a rumored lineup already for which characters are going to be making their appearance in the show. Uh, the lineup is, as you would expect for most of these, uh, Constantine, Zatanna, Deadman, Jason Blood, who is also known as uh, the Demon Etrigan, and Swamp Thing. So all of these guys, except for Jason Blood, are currently in the comic book. So all of them make sense, kind of, sort of, except for Blood. But I feel like there's a lot more comic book lore justifications for him being there that I'm just not as familiar with because I'm not a big just uh, JLD reader. Um, that being said, that's all we've got for that rumor. Our 
final piece of rumor is very, very interesting. And this one is really just powers of deduction. And it was uh, le uh, pretty, pretty well-known leakers, quote unquote, people who are close to Marvel uh, that have been putting these things together. Uh, so we have She-Hulk is what the rumor surrounds. Uh, so She-Hulk and Spider-Man, I guess, technically. She-Hulk and Spider-Man are both scheduled to be filming in the early weeks of July, I specifically the very first week of July, assuming everything still goes as planned and things don't get pushed back even further. They are both going to be filming in Atlanta in the first week of July. And if you want to believe some of the other rumors we've talked about concerning these two characters, then it seems that Jen Walters, a.k.a. She-Hulk, might be making a cameo in the Spider-Man 3 movie, the whatever Homeward Bound, whatever Spider-Man movie we're getting next. Uh, she's going to be in it. So if they're filming her series and that movie next to each other, then that just reaffirms those rumors that she's going to be in Spider-Man 3. Uh, still no casting announcement for who will be playing Miss Walters. Uh, also, very little is known about either of these two, uh, the movie or the series, but it's so much fun to think about. Uh, but that is everything we have in rumors, guys. That does it for this episode of Headlines Nerds. For a more in-depth conversation on these nerdy bits, plus a longer news show, uh, the other reviews that we don't do here on Big Show, so on and so forth, Comic-Con coverage, all of that stuff, you can join me on my personal YouTube channel, Generally Nerd. But while you are here, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share on all of the Big Show Entertainment Media platforms, especially the YouTube. I'm going to keep saying it until we hit our... We're, we're look, looking for a thousand subscriptions. Once we hit a thousand subscriptions, we will be doing a drawing. All of our subscribers on the YouTube channel are eligible to win a PlayStation 4 Pro or a PlayStation 5, depending on where we are in the timeline once we hit that mark. So, that being said, don't forget to subscribe, click the bell for notifications, all that stuff that you do on the YouTubes. And tune in next time, guys, for all that's happening across the nerd world.